Buying a modem for your home network can be a dangerous game. That's because there's so much marketing jargon involved. Undoubtedly, when searching the internet for a modem, you've seen terms such as gaming modem, high speed modem, blazing fast modem. The different terms go on and on, but the thing you need to remind yourself is that modems are actually pretty simple devices. They have one simple goal of connecting your home to the internet. And if you need a refresher on what purpose your modem serves in your home network, I've previously made a video that I'll link to up above that details exactly what modems do and why you need them in your home network. So keeping in mind the fact that modems are such simple devices, there are only a few main factors you need to pay attention to when you're buying a modem for your home network. Coincidentally, my mother-in-law just requested that I help her buy a modem and router for her home network, so I figured this is a perfect time to detail the process I follow to buy a modem for a home network. So in this episode from Network From Home, I'm going to be breaking down all these steps for you, and I'll also give you a process that you can follow when you're buying a modem for your home network. When picking out a modem for my mother-in-law, the first question I asked is what internet service provider she had. And that's because when you're buying a modem, your modem needs to be compatible with your internet service provider. So before you go worrying about this, most common modems for sale today, they're compatible with the major internet service providers or ISPs. They're compatible with Spectrum, Cox, Xfinity. You really don't have to worry about this unless you have an internet service provider that's not really one of these common providers. In that case, you just need to verify that your modem is compatible with that ISP. Okay, so far so good. The next thing that I needed to figure out from my mother-in-law is what type of internet connection she has, whether she has DSL, cable, or Xfinity. And this was an easy step to check off for me because I've been to her house before. I know that she has a cable internet plan, and quite frankly, the vast majority of people have cable internet plans, so that's the default. If you're not sure what type of internet connection you have, I've made a video that will help you break this down. It breaks down the difference between DSL, cable, and fiber internet plans, and it will allow you to decisively say what type of internet connection you have. After checking off that box, I then moved to the type of internet plan she has. More specifically, I was trying to figure out what is the maximum speed of my mother-in-law's internet plan? The easiest way to get this information is to take a look at the latest monthly internet bill. So I asked my mother-in-law for a copy of her latest monthly bill. And on this bill, it breaks down that her internet plan is for speeds up to 300 megabits per second. The reason that this is important is because you need to make sure that the modem that you're buying supports at least the maximum speed provided by the internet plan. In this regard, you may see a term that looks slightly confusing. It will say DOCSIS, and it will likely say version 3.0 or 3.1. The thing to keep in mind here is that DOCSIS, all it really tells you is the specification that that modem is built to. We don't need to go into too much depth about DOCSIS here, but a DOCSIS 3.0 modem will be able to support speeds up to 1000 megabits per second, and if you have an internet plan that's faster than 1,000 megabits per second, you'll want a DOCSIS 3.1 modem. That's the latest standard. That's the fastest on the market today. With these specifications that I collected, I was able to build a list of modems that would fit the bill from a specifications and performance standpoint. But the last variable always is price. Before you go too crazy here and buy a modem that's the most expensive, thinking it will give you the best performance, you need to keep in mind that you can probably get a good modem for $150 or less. If this seems like a lot of money, just consider the fact that if you're renting your modem and router from your ISP, they might be charging you $10 or $15 a month. This was the case for my mother-in-law and there's nothing more infuriating than paying $15 a month for substandard equipment provided by your ISP. That's why we're going through this process here to buy my mother-in-law her own standalone modem and router, because even if she spends two or $300 to buy a modem and router, in paying $15 a month to rent the equipment, she'll end up saving money in 18 months or less. 
So when you're going to buy your modem and router, obviously it's nice to buy something that will support internet speeds that are maybe a little bit faster than your internet plan now. This gives you the opportunity to upgrade your internet plan in the future and not have to buy a new modem and a new router. With that said, there's a fine line here. If your internet plan is for 500 megabits per second, you probably don't need a Doxis 3.1 modem and you don't need to pay extra for that. The reason being, even if you have 500 megabits per second now and you wanna to upgrade to say 800 megabits per second, a Doxis 3.0 modem will still fit the bill. Now that we've gone over all the important factors for buying a modem, here's the list of requirements I put together for buying a modem from my mother-in-law. As you can see here, the modem needs to be compatible with Xfinity. It needs to be a cable modem. The maximum internet speed supported by the modem needs to be at least 300 megabits per second. We can either use Doxis 3.0 or Doxis 3.1 to fit the bill here. But again, we wanna keep in mind this last factor, the price. If we can find a modem for $150 or less, we'll be more than happy. With all this information, I was able to narrow down what I wanted to get from my mother-in-law, and we were able to find a modem that fit the bill from a performance standpoint. So, drum roll please. And the type of modem that I got from my mother-in-law is a Netgear CM700 modem. So let's go ahead and make sure I met all the requirements for this modem with the Netgear CM700. First and foremost, it needs to be supported by Xfinity. That I confirmed, it says right on the box that that's the case. The next thing, we need to make sure that it's a cable internet modem. Yes, that's the case, it says it on the box here as well. Okay, the next thing here, it needs to support speeds up to 300 megabits per second. This is a Doxis 3.0 modem, and it supports internet speeds up to 800 megabits per second. So what we're talking about here is not only are we supporting our current internet plan, but this also allows for an upgrade of the plan in the future and you won't have to replace your modem. The last factor here, we want to see if we can find a modem that's $150 or less. I was able to find this one on Amazon for $120, so we meet that last requirement as well. If you have a similar internet plan to my mother-in-law and you think this modem would be a good fit for your home network, I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can check this modem out and make sure that it meets the criteria that I list here in our checklist. Despite all the noise when you're looking at modems online and trying to figure out which one to buy, if you keep these four or five requirements in mind and take a step-by-step -step approach, it's honestly pretty simple to find a modem that fits your home network needs. If you have any questions about this information, please drop a comment below. If this video was useful for you and you liked the process that I laid out in this video, please give it a like. We wanna make sure this video gets shared with other people who are also in the market for a new modem. And then lastly, if you like the things that I talk about in my videos, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. I'll have much more content coming down the line here, including videos about how to pick out your router and how to set up and unbox your modem and your router for your home network. As always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home, and we'll catch you on the next one.